Now let's move on to lighting. You know, Mr. Castelli was very careful to say something. He said, quote, we modeled from the very top of the building to the bottom of the podium. He said, I quote, we modeled from the very top of the building to the bottom of the podium. Now in his letter to the developers, which we have a copy of, he, I, I've uh, called it out there, that sentence uh, fragment two right there. He wrote something different. He wrote, all tenant fit out floors above the podium were modeled to have complete lighting systems installed. So in his letter, which produced, which described the study, which produced the numbers that he showed you, he modeled above the podium. But he just said to you tonight that he modeled the whole building. Now I went, I actually have a PhD in computer science and my PhD was partly about lighting simulation, so I replicated his findings. And I just want to show you the difference. If you take his findings, there's that blue wedge there, which shows you all the light arriving at a point on the sidewalk uh, from the floors above the podium. If you advance that mic. If you include the podium, you get a much greater amount of light arriving at the sidewalk, or more importantly, at the windows of the abutters. And it works out into about double. So the, the actual amount of light arriving is about double. Why, why do just those four floors make a difference, such a big difference? Well, one is that they're, uh, they're closer. And secondly, they're uh, more directly addressing the, the uh, area. So the light from inside is coming straight out as opposed to down at an angle. Well, that's one piece, that's one way in which the numbers you were given tonight are misleading. But now consider what's actually inside those offices. They've modeled ceiling light fixtures like these. But think about any modern office. What do you see when you walk into any modern office? You see a bunch of busy bees with giant monitors, which have been engineered to be super bright for those workers. And, and in my lab, my students have two or three of these big monitors on their desk, each of them. Each of them draws about 50 watts. So it's safe to say that if you have uh, several hundred people working right near the windows in this building at night, and you know they're going to work late because they're all doing startups and working in their labs late to play at night, it's going to be another factor of <coughs> 1.5 or 2. Okay? And then finally, let's look, Mike, you just had a picture of the old building up there. Look at the old building. The old building had tiny little windows. It's hard to see because they're kind of dim. Sorry. And not many of them. So the total facade covered by glass there is maybe 20%. That's what it looks like. Whereas, and that's what it looks like. Thanks, that's what it looks like. Thanks. But in the new building, it's going to be 100% glass. They say 50% of the lights going to, are going to be on. Who knows? 50%, 80%, 100%. But again, common sense tells you that the difference between that thing, which is dark at night, because it was, even when it was in active use, because it was a courthouse, and it closed at 5 p.m., the difference between that thing at night and the new proposed thing at night is going to be enormous. And if you could just go back to the, to the uh, diagram, Mike. They gave you numbers in foot candles. I don't know who here knows what a foot candle is. But a foot candle uh, turns out to be about 100 full moons worth of light. So the bottom line is that everybody living near this thing is going to look out their window at 10, 11 o'clock when they want to go to sleep. And they're going to see something shining with the light of 100 full moons. Now, some maybe one full moon, I mean, full moons are beautiful, they're great, and we love having full moons once a month. And maybe they keep some of us up, okay? That's life. But do you, does anyone want 100 full moons shining into their window? So I ask you, uh, members, to apply a common sense test. So I'm asking you, we're, we're asking, we're appealing to you. Hell, I'll get down on my knees and I'll beg you, please, apply a common sense question to this proposal. This is insanity to put, it was wrong to do it 50 years ago, and it's wrong to do it now. And the, Mike mentioned that um, we would be passing this on to the next generation if we perpetuate it. I would say it's worse than that. People talk about once in a lifetime opportunities to fix mistakes. This is a once in forever opportunity to fix 